Hello to everybody on YouTube and welcome to Review For You. In today's film, Pixar Animation Studios takes us back to the ocean with Nemo and friends in Finding Dory. Just keep swimming, Mom! Dad! Does this mean we have to say goodbye to Dory? I don't know why I thought I could do this. Dory, you are about to find your parents. And when you do that, you'll be home. The latest feature film from Pixar, the sequel to their smash hit Finding Nemo, reunites director Andrew Stanton with returning stars Ellen DeGeneres and Albert Brooks. The large voice cast also features Hayden Rowlands, replacing Alexander Gord as Nemo, Ed O'Neill, Diane Keaton, Eugene Levy, Caitlin Olsen, Ty Burrell, Idris Elba and Sigourney Weaver. Set one year after the event of its predecessor, Dory takes centre stage this time, as the blue tang with short-term memory loss suddenly starts to remember her long-lost parents. Not wanting to forget them, Dory sets out with Marlin and Nemo on another adventure beyond the ocean, to become reunited with her family. When it was released in 2003, Finding Nemo received unanimous praise from critics and audiences of all ages. And to this day, it is still widely considered one of the all-time best in Pixar's catalogue. Following it up with a sequel 13 years later was never going to be easy. And yes, you can easily make the argument that a sequel never even needed to exist, but in this case, the fact that it does is a really great thing, as Finding Dory is a delightful follow-up. Once again, Ellen DeGeneres is absolutely brilliant as Dory, bringing an overflowing amount of energy, enthusiasm and emotion to her forgetful but completely unforgettable character. Ellen may not be a very prolific actress, but it's simply impossible to imagine anyone better suited for the role, and viewers of all ages should have no trouble hoping for her to succeed every step of the way. The entire supporting cast also provide top-notch performances as the colourful host of returning and new friends we meet throughout the film. But I have to single out Ed O'Neill as a seven-legged octopus named Hank. The Golden Globe and Emmy-nominated star of Married with Children and Modern Family is able to capture an outstanding range of feelings to an accomplice that always possesses a good heart underneath his grouchy demeanour. Although the storyline bears many similarities and goes down a few of the same pathways, Finding Dory never becomes a carbon copy of the original, and more than achieves its goal to deliver terrific family entertainment on its own merits. This is one of those sequels that works through being familiar without ever feeling like a complete retread. And although it's never as consistently funny, the engaging cast and narrative, coupled with the continuity they share with the first film, is what makes it endlessly enjoyable. Some of its best moments come from frequent flashbacks of Dory's childhood, as she continues to remember new valuable information about her parents' whereabouts. One scene that explains the origin and importance of her famous Just Keep Swimming jingle is particularly adorable to watch. I also have to give the movie an immense amount of praise for the way it explores and writes characters with disabilities. Through friends and family, I know many people that have some form of physical or mental health condition, and I'm not ashamed to admit that I have a couple of mental disorders myself. In my case, it's Asperger's Syndrome and Anxiety. The reason I bring this up is because whenever anything is going to handle such a sensitive subject, the way they do so is extremely important to me. Without giving too much away, Finding Dory represents disabilities with numerous characters, and its portrayals of them are just exceptional. It's supportive and encouraging without ever stereotyping, resulting in a fantastically uplifting film for those with special needs. Technically speaking, it's a given that Pixar will deliver a visually stunning piece of work. But even so, the stellar animation still needs to be acknowledged and applauded, as these characters and environments look more impeccably detailed and gorgeously lifelike than ever before. And once the movie's over, I encourage you to stay in your seat until the very end, as although the closing credits are quite lengthy, there is an excellent scene afterwards that's definitely worth waiting for. The best way I can describe Finding Dory is it's like attending a great reunion between family and friends. You're seeing these wonderful characters again for the first time in many years, and even though nothing about them has really changed, you still feel happy to see them again just as you remember them, as well as meet their new companions and go on one more delightful adventure with them all. Proof that Pixar is indeed capable of producing worthy sequels outside of the Toy Story franchise 
Finding Dory is a beautifully heartwarming story with inspiring messages, and I'm scoring it a 9 out of 10. And that's my review for you on Finding Dory. It may have been a 13 year wait, plus an additional couple of months for it to come out over here in the UK, but it was certainly worth it. As always, if you've seen the film, I would love to know what you thought, so please feel free to leave me a little review in the comments. And if you like this video and want to keep up to date, then please be sure to subscribe and follow me on social media. In addition to Facebook and Twitter, I also have a Letterboxd account that I'm hoping to use more often, and I posted the link to that in the description as well. Until next time, I'm Chris Wing, and thank you for watching Review For You.